What's up chatbot builders? So today I want to go over something that's happening with the OpenAI Assistance API in a particular builder that I'm currently taking advantage of and something that I like to see. I hope this conversation makes you maybe a little bit more aware of what's going on in the back end, um, as well as maybe open up a discussion about what could happen in the future, right? Now, the builder that I have open up right now is Chatbot Builder, and this is the integrations tab where you have all of your open AI stuff. And for those of you that have used the platform, you know, you can edit your prompt in here, set auto GPT, and you have assistance in here. And the text says, hey, assistance allow AI to respond based on your business data. You can provide more data opening up or by uploading files. Now, there's more then meets the eye here with this name assistance. And in fact, this particular assistance and function calling uh, functionality here is directly tied into the back end of the OpenAI Assistance API. I'm going to show you how I know this. But anyways, let's click manage. I threw up a very quick demo here of a car dealership, okay? And I created two assistants. One of them is kind of the general brain that I'm gonna tap into. And then another one that we can train on some dealership locations and we can call in into this build. But if we look at the Beach Ford general brain that I've built here, and Beach Ford is a specific dealership here in Virginia Beach, we have a very straightforward prompt that we don't really need to go into here, but I do have two function calls here, which I have get car image and find dealership. And basically I'm adding this function. I want whenever the user talks about a different model of car, I wanna show them a picture of it. And let's kind of see how this will work here. Welcome to Beach Ford. How can I help you today? Yeah, I'm looking at test driving a vehicle. Now it's probably gonna ask, hey, what model are you looking at? Give me some more information here. That's great. Do you have a specific vehicle model in mind? Eh, I'm kind of digging the Bronco right now. So what should happen is I should see a picture of a Bronco. If this is working correctly. There we go. So we have this nice picture, which I just pulled from the Ford website. The Bronco looks ruggedly stylish with its bold design, impressive off-road capabilities, making it a fantastic choice for adventure seekers and those who appreciate a classic versatile SUV. So I've also attached a little bit of a write-up of a description. And then I have a button here, test drive this Bronco, which, okay, great. We have a call to action because anybody that is interacting with the chatbot from a car dealership's perspective, get us in, get, get this user into the dealership, okay? I'm looking to looking for leads here. Okay, so that function call worked. Now the dealership one. All right, what is the closest dealership to me? Now it should ask me, you know, well, where the heck are you located? Could you please provide me with your current location? I'm in Virginia Beach. I'm anticipating that it's going to say, okay, here are some locations in Virginia Beach. We got a lot here. So we got Beach Ford, we got some Norfolk, Chesapeake, Hampton. We've got, you know, all of this kind of extra information here. And we've got address, phone, ratings. We've got some markdown styling here that we can clean up with some chain prompting. Not that big of a deal. But anyways, you get the idea, right? Okay. I'm in Virginia Beach. Here are some locations. You know what? I'm actually meeting my mom for lunch in Chesapeake. What are all the locations in there? Right, which is kind of a weird response for the user to say to the chatbot, right? I'm going to lunch with my mom. Where's how about in Chesapeake? So let's see if it picks up this intent appropriately. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Hope I didn't break the damn thing. There we go. 
with got Greenbrier and then Chesapeake Square, which actually that was a bad example because it already gave me those two previously. But at least it, you know, it cut out the rest of them. You can visit these little dealerships if you need any services while you're in Chesapeake. I actually am thinking about the Mustang. So I'm saying, okay, I know I told you I like the Bronco, but what happens if I change my mind? Now I should see a picture of a Mustang. And I see that my head is cutting off the response here, but we should also see a picture come through, an image of the Mustang with a similar ride up here. Okay, test drive this Mustang, right? So this is uh, just kind of a small snapshot here of some of the dynamic back and forths that I can have if I set up a chatbot this way. Now this is not a fully functioning demo and I just made this for this YouTube video. So that's from the functionality perspective, it's really the only thing that this thing can do at the moment. But I wanted to show you how you can use these assistants and functions inside of a chatbot to create unique, potentially useful and powerful sophistication inside of your chatbot. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's go to open AI here. So I've changed instead of your normal like prompt here, I just have the assistant beach for general drive the entire conversation, right? It is the one that is controlling the routing. So if we go back into the assistants, beach for general, I've got a prompt. And I'm saying inside of the prompt that it has these two functions, get car image, find dealership. Okay, so what are these functions? We go back to integrations. Open AI functions. Get car image. Collects the desired model the user is looking for and calls a function that shows the user an image of the vehicle. And I collect the model. And I trigger a new flow, which is get car image. We go to flows. Get car image. Here we go. Okay. I have a call here to open AI, which is generate text, which is say, hey, they've just make a match. And that this is me kind of doing some pre-prompting to help increase the chance that it hits Google Sheets correctly with how I have this Google Sheet, which I have a Google Sheet that's got images on them, okay? So it's just pulling these pictures from Google Sheets that I created. Here's the image coming through, and then here's where the write-up comes through, and then a button, which was test drive this thing, okay? So that's the entire flow. Now, how does this flow get called? And here's the important part from the OpenAI Assistant side. Whenever, the general brain decides it's a good idea to call that flow, okay? And that's why it is a little bit more dynamic and less linear, fill out this form, go in this direct, you know, back and forth. It's because the assistant is controlling the general brain. And I have told the assistant, you have this function, trigger it when this happens, when X, Y, and Z happen. So if your prompts are strong and you know what you are doing, you can kind of set these situations up for some dynamic function calling. Okay, now you could say, Connor, all right, this is just normal. Everything you've shown me so far is, our, is just baked into Chatbot Builder. All right, I already know how to do this. I already know what I'm doing. What, why is the OpenAI Assistance API part of this important? Okay, so every single account from Chatbot Builder comes with their own API key, okay? You don't have to enter anything. You got a flat rate. It's got all the tokens, okay? But it's limited on the models that you can choose, everything being 4.0 mini at the moment. Watch what happens if I disconnect this key. Which, Connor, why would you disconnect their key? They're giving you tokens, all right? Well, maybe you need 4.0 functionality for something. And I can tell you from experience, 4.0 
is a better model than 4.0 Mini. It does everything better across the board. The only thing that 4.0 Mini has over 4.0 is cost, which is why Chatbot Builder gives it to you as part of the flat rate pricing, which they, they have to, because if they gave you 4.0, they wouldn't be profitable. They would no longer exist because 4.0 is expensive. And whatever the, the, the model of the day, the best and the brightest, it's going to be expensive. That's just how it works. And then everything gets better and we wait and the bar keeps getting raised. But anyways, we're going to disconnect this. And then all my stuff went away. Ah, okay. Connect your open AI key. All right. So I'm going to go off screen here. I'm going to create a new key. Builder YouTube video. Now this is going to be in my own open AI account. Copy. I'll delete that at the end. No worries. Okay. So now I've got all my stuff back. If we go to manage for assistance. Oh, look, we've got my same stuff. We should be good, right? Let's start a new conversation and watch what happens. Let's clear and delete this so that I can refresh here. Welcome to Beach Ford. We're so glad you're here. How can I assist you today? Hi, I'd like to test drive a vehicle. I can help you with that. Could you please provide me with the following details to make in the model of the vehicle you're interested, your location, dealership you're considering, your preferred? Huh, that's kind of a different response. What's going on there? I'm interested in a Bronco. Great choice. Ford Bronco is a popular vehicle. Could you please provide me a look at what, like, what happened? Where, where's my functionality? Where's my image? Why is this thing now acting differently? And all I've done is swapped out my, my own open AI key, right? So if we go into the error logs of chatbot builder, which is in case you were wondering, we go into flows, go into error log. Oh, we've got some, some stuff going on here. We've got no thread found. We've got can't add message to thread. And those of you that know the OpenAI Assistance API and how this is set up, okay, this is very common nomenclature for the OpenAI Assistance API, right? You have to add a thread, add message to thread. You have to run the thread to call a tool, you have to fetch the response, okay? You have to set up all of these API interactions with the OpenAI Assistance API. And this should let you know, all because I swapped out my key, these assistants are no longer being utilized, they're no longer being used, right? And that is because they're sitting on chatbot builders open AI account on their back end, right? Now watch what happens if we create a new one. Connors, open AI key, Beach Ford. So I'm gonna create a new one. Now let's, I'm gonna save this real quick and copy the instructions here. Beach for general, we'll go back, copy. There we go, we've got our prompt back. Now I can change this model from 4.0 mini to 4.0, and I can add my two functions back that I want. Okay, click save. Okay, now you guys just watched me well, we'll do the same thing for dealership locations real quick. Connor's open AI key, dealership locations. And I actually have, I think, a file dealerships. Let's see if that works. I may have to upload that again. Yep, I'm gonna have to do that. So there we go, we got an error for that. Let's go and look at what that error log says. 
files were not found, OpenAI. Okay, and that's because they vectorized it as part of the assistant. That was an old file for a different assistant. So I have to re-upload that file. Let me get the prompt again. And let me double check. Got some. That's all right. I will do this off screen. There we go. There we go. New dealerships. So because I swapped API keys, the old assistants that I made are no longer usable. I cannot tap into them anymore. I don't have access to them. All right, so let's recheck this now. I want to test drive a vehicle. Should say what model. I'm looking at an F-150. We should see a picture of the truck come through and that test drive F-150. There we go. So it's working again. Now, this is not really what I wanted to show you here. Watch what happens if I go to my own assistance API backend here. Okay, if I go to this dashboard. Look at my top two assistants here which is Connor's OpenAI key dealership locations and Connor's OpenAI key Beach Ford. Okay, so this is directly tied into my own OpenAI account right now through Chatbot Builder. So I created an assistant in Chatbot Builder. Now I'm looking at my own OpenAI account backend. So because I created this assistant, it also creates it back here. Now, if I look at the instructions, it's my prompt here. I've got the model. Now here is, I think, the, the, hey, pay attention to this moment here. Look at the functions. I have get car image and I have find dealership. If I click them, Chatbot Builder took what I provided it, and it made the schema for me for the function call. Get car image is the name, collects the desired model the user is looking for, and calls a function that shows the user an image of the vehicle. It's got the type object, string, required car model, which that is the data that it collected, right? If we go back to Chatbot Builder, if we go back to functions, we go to get car image. What data collect? Car underscore model required. Car underscore model. This is how it works. This is why it is working. Because Chatbot Builder has taken the OpenAI Assistance API and integrated it into their own backend here. Now, why? is this potentially useful for you as a chatbot builder? Because if for you were to make this yourself, or you were to tap into the OpenAI Assistance API on your own through another builder, this is me in BotPress. What do I have to do in order to tie in? I've got to write JavaScript to handle everything. Create a message. Check the thread, open a new thread if it doesn't exist, execute the run, grab the result. I have to handle all of this by writing code. If I want to add a function, I have to write it in JavaScript. I have to write the schema myself. I have to handle the data myself. I have to write everything out in code. And inside of Chatbot Builder, I don't need to do that because Chatbot Builder is converting what you are seeing on this page directly into the OpenAI backend to do it for you, 
which means that instead of writing JavaScript, what am I doing? I'm in here. I'm in a drag and drop flow builder. I'm in a drag and drop automation execution flow builder that's integrated with the OpenAI Assistance API brain, which I allow agent functionality to control the conversational logic flow and be more dynamic. And then when I have these specific instances that I want to tie in, hey, show the user an image of this car. That would be pretty cool whenever they mention a model or anything else you can think of that would be beneficial to the businesses you are working with. This is what I like to see. This is what I want. And the reason is because, okay, open AI, what do we know about them? They're well-funded. They have some of the smartest people on the face of the planet working on their technology. They're continuing to push out premier models. We're going to stay in this ecosystem and atmosphere for a while. Now they're burning through cash quickly, but let's just make an assumption that they're going to probably be around playing in this game for a while. The assistance API has already gone through its second iteration of improvement. Here's version two. Here's 10,000 files that you can attach to and do all of this stuff with. You notice that GPTs, there hasn't been kind of a lot of development on them. Okay, that was kind of nice. It was fun for people to kind of share their stuff and get around. This is uh, the assistance API. This is what's going to stick around. This is what is going to continue to get improved on. I like that there is a builder that has that awareness and is tying into their backend, the assistance API, because what happens when version three of the assistance API comes out? We're, we will get a natural boost of functionality similarly to if we got a new model coming out, which also will continue to happen, right? So there's a potential that we can win more often by sticking around in the OpenAI Assistance API. Now, I think other building platforms are potentially shying away from showing examples and providing this integration and functionality because they are worried that if OpenAI Assistance API is the driver of the brain, then maybe you don't need that platform for logic flow. Maybe they just become a term that is commonly tossed out here, a GPT wrapper. I disagree with that thought, right? Because I think all of these builders will be useful, even tying into these and having this functionality and tying into common integrations that chatbot builders want to see. They can sit as a conversational router on top of the OpenAI Assistance API, which is kind of what we're seeing a little bit inside of Chatbot Builder. So I hope that more platforms start to do more stuff in this particular realm because that's where I want to hang out. I want the dynamic aspects of the OpenAI Assistance API to drive the brain. Now, what are some of the drawbacks of this? The OpenAI Assistance API drives the brain. Do you know exactly that this is going to work how you intend it to work every single time? And the answer to that is probably no. So you do lose a little bit of control. If you want full control, you want 100%, build out your linear conversational logic flows. But if you want a little bit of dynamic functionality, a little bit of, hey, the user didn't, didn't respond. They didn't provide their name when I wanted it name. It didn't provide an email address when I asked them for an email address. How do you handle those responses, Connor? Well, th there's only two paths. 
that I see right now, right? Which is number one, you take your linear logic conversational flows and you add in all of these catch-alls everywhere and have this giant spider web of if this happens, then that happens and just try to catch as much as you can. Or you tap into the OpenAI Assistance API with function calls for various things and, and short flow execution flows that you can tie, that you can come back into the general brain as quick as possible. I, I think it's a better deal. I think it's a better route for right now. But anyways, I'm curious and interested to hear your guys' thoughts on if you're using the OpenAI Assistance API inside of your chatbots and how is it going? Are you getting the functionality that you want? Do you have any good examples of dynamic function calls that do cool and powerful things inside of chatbots? Because I th think this is what we're going to start seeing more and more often. Anyways, hope you found this useful. Talk to you guys soon.